Get the viewers, welcome back. Uh, today I've got a, uh, a little project I'm working on, uh, building a LED trailer module uh, for my Disco 3. Now, what's a LED trailer module, you're probably wondering. <laughs> uh, uh, basically, with the Discovery 3 in particular, is that right? Hello. With the Discovery 3 in particular, uh, the vehicle sends a pulse down the indicator circuits. Now, with incandescent bulbs, you won't have a problem. You plug your trailer into your trailer plug, uh, the vehicle recognises there's a trailer there, and you don't have an issue. Uh, however, with a trailer with LED uh, lights, so there's no resistance in the, uh, in the LEDs, so they start just flickering with that, that pulse that's going through. So what we need to do is make a module that will put a resistor in line uh, so that the vehicle will pick up that there's a trailer attached. And two, we need a system that eliminates that flickering. So uh, we need a combination of resistors and relays to make this work. Uh, so this is my old module that I had in my discovery. Uh, Basically what I was happening was I had a, an issue with the left hand indicator circuit on this one so uh, the right hand side was working as intended, uh, left hand side no signal getting through this box. Uh, this is a by linear electronic design. Uh, I did originally look at thinking oh, maybe it's something I can repair in there but when we look inside uh, it's basically all on a printed circuit board. It's all epoxied in. Like, there's no real way of getting into that without uh, without starting to destroy things. But we can see, what load resistors here, and then our relays, and everything else is on the board. So we're going to get rid of this and create a, a whole new one. I'm going to have a switch all built into the box. Uh, this one before I basically had switches wired in externally and it did look a bit messy so we'll neaten this up we'll just end up with one single wire in and out and it'll be pretty much it what's going to be inside this box is basically this here uh, what happens is our wiring comes in to the box uh, and this is basically an indicator circuit so we've got our load resistor here so this is going to provide a path to earth. The load resistor is what is going to take the place of an incandescent bulb that's normally in the trailer. Uh, this is the key part in the pickup of the vehicle and recognising it's got a trailer on. So uh, this is now a relay. Uh, so we split it off here into the switch so we can go through the coil which will energise and that'll create our path back to earth there and our relay will then engage and complete the circuit for the trailer. So aluminium box, uh, it's 119 by 93 by 56 and a half if you want to be specific, aluminium box from JCAR. Aluminium is important because these are the load resistors I'm going to be using, they're just a uh, uh, LED auto lamps, part numbers LR12. Why we're we using the aluminium box is because these jobbies, as you may or not be able to see, they're apparently rated to up to 170 degrees in operation. So this is just going to act as a bit of a heat sink uh, just to dissipate that heat. Two load resistors for each circuit, and also just a couple of relays. Uh, so one relay for each circuit. Now I could have gone for a couple of relays I had floating around, these little small ones, but uh, I sort of like these as you've got the little tab, I'm going to actually mount them up inside the box, so these would have just been left floating around, which not really a fan of. Uh, obviously for our cable, I'm just going to use a 5 core trailer wire that I've just got left lying around, so uh, that's easy and just a gland to go on the side of the uh, the box and that's just for holding the cable in place. Uh, 
as well. There'll just be various crimp fittings that I'll be using. Uh, I'll use some spade connectors on the end of these just to hook into the uh, the setup in the in the car. Right, I'm going to be using this old three-way switch that I had in the last one. In the last. So that three-way switch will just go back in. in. But apart from that, uh, it's all pretty straightforward, so we'll get into it. So I'll run through all the costs on this at the end of the video. But uh, for the time being, what we might do is a bit of these components out and we'll sort of set up how we're going to lay out this box inside there. What I'm hoping to do with this is just put it in the side there so she's just all mounted, all the wiring will be internal. So these relays are just your standard 30 amp 5, five pin relays. Uh, Okay, so I'm thinking of these probably be. I was going to try and keep them separated, sort of left and right, as much as I can. Probably you know, something like that, and probably opposites. The cable in the side. I could probably. Bring that in there. Bring that in there, maybe. It's kind of one of those things that's a, a little jigsaw puzzle to sort out how you're actually going to make it all work. After a bit of playing around, I think this is the way I'm going to do it. Uh, I'll keep switching one end, clean the other end. Actually, I might go that end for the switch. There's a bit more, uh, bit more room in there. Cable coming in, in that way. That'll uh, keep things neat enough, I think. Uh, time to just mark everything up where we're going to drill some holes. So I'm just going to drill these in and rivet these in place. I figure that's just going to be the easiest way to go about that. So. I'm not going to do the gland on both ends, just in case you're wondering. I'm not being overly particular where this is mounted, just as long as it kind of looks, looks neat.
Yeah. Yeah. Didn't see that one coming, did I? That was a fun mistake. I uh, trace that on the back side. Of course, it's the other way around when it's this way, isn't it? That's okay. Not too big a deal. Plenty of holes in it now. The rivet idea wasn't going to work, so I'm just going to go a couple little little bolts in here just to hold those uh, relays in place. Let's see if I can get a spring wash on there. That might not fit. Nah, not quite going to be enough room. See what I've done wrong here already. Put this back to front. Hopefully that's oh. right. looks like it's going that way after all. <laughs> So that's the basic layout. It is going to be a bit crowded in there when we start bringing in our five core wire. That's all right. So here's where it gets a little bit messy. So I've got the main components all laid out. Uh, I'm going to separate to left hand indicator circuit and right hand indicator circuit as I'm looking at it. So obviously you're looking at it upside down. Uh, I've just stripped a couple of bits of uh, yellow cable for the left hand circuits when I wire it in. And the green out of the 5 core uh, for the right hand side. Uh, essentially what I'm going to do, because it's 5 core, this is, the white is going to be my main earth out which I'll hook into an earth point uh, in the car. Uh, the 
from the car I'll use the brown and the red for left and right respectively. Uh, so they're going to hook from the source in the car so that'll go straight into the, the center of our switch. This is where it gets a little messy in a way. We'll get that earth wire out of the way for the moment. Our outputs are going to be our left and right so they'll go onto this side. Now this will basically mean this switch will come in and then it will just bypass this whole unit and go straight back out. So these two will be hooked into there. The other circuit that will go into our relays will come out and in here <laughs> and then after the relay they'll go and then he'll in, I'll crimp them into the same plug on this side. So like I said this is going to be a, a little bit messy to follow but So I'll try and keep everything all colour coded as much as I can. Uh, so obviously your white is all going to be our earths. I'm going to use those off each relay coil and I'll tee back in with the rest of these earths. So they will be our relay uh, powered This should be the last couple of wires to go in. All that. A final couple of wires. So this is brings together the the output from the relays and just the normal off switch. So I'll be both running into the same spot together. Those pliers certainly help. Try 
with some cable ties here. We'll try and neaten all this up a little. Try and keep all these this wiring off the uh, resistors as much as we can. Because we know they get a little warm. I'll try and straighten all this up. Try and just keep the left and right circuits separate as much as I can. Only just for aesthetics a little. There we go guys, that's basically the job done. Uh, the only thing that's left is obviously the hookup in the uh, in the disco. But there we go guys. Apart from just trimming the length of that cable to the right uh, right length we need. Okay, so to finish up, let's talk about how much all this costs to make. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, Pretty much to buy something like this ready to go, uh, from what I can see, over $200. Uh, if you know of a cheap one, then uh, throw a comment down below and we'll, uh, we'll let everyone else know. But anyway, uh, what this actually cost me, so the junction box from JCAR, $22.95. Uh, the resistors, $26. The relays, uh, the pair of them, $20. And I normally have a, a supply of spade terminals and crimp terminals and whatnot, but I actually run out doing this job, so I went and bought uh, a packet of 100 spade terminals, which was $30.95. Uh, you know, if you were just doing this job and you had, you were just getting what you needed, you could definitely get just the terminals you need for a bit cheaper than that. Uh, I used some cable that I had already had, so. Uh, you'd probably add a few bucks here and there if you needed to buy absolutely everything from scratch. Uh, and the, the gland on the box for the cable, uh, I already had that sitting around as well, so that was another no cost item. But uh, all up, $99.90 is what uh, has cost me directly, so under $100. Alright, guys. Uh, I think that about wraps it up, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, I encourage you to throw some comments, uh, hit the thumbs up if you like what you see, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers guys.